go around the room and introduce our readers. So I'm Karen, and I'm going to be reading a book about African culture. I'm Ananya, and I'm going to be reading about German culture. So the book is Rumpelstiltskin. Uh, my name is Surya. I'm going to be reading about British culture, and the book is Shanti Clara and the Fox. Hi, my name is Dia, and I'm going to be reading about Mexican culture, and my book's name is Adelita, a Mexican Cinderella Story. I'm Kavizi, and I'm going to be reading about Indian culture, and the book I'm reading is called Same, Same, but Different. I'm Annika, and I'm going to be reading about a mix of cultures. Um, the book I'm reading is called All Are Welcome. I'm Pranav, uh, I'm going to be reading a book of a Greek culture called When We Are Kind. Hello, I'm Anish. I'm going to be reading about Caribbean culture, and the book is called The Caribbean Dream. Anya. Uh, the book that I'm reading is on Chinese culture, and it's about the zodiac, Chinese zodiac. It's Aria, and I'm reading about Native American culture, and the book name is We Are Water Protectors. Hi, my name is Deepon Chu, and I'm going to be reading about the Arabian culture. My book is Where Are You From? Once again, my name is Karen. I'm going to be reading about African culture, and my book is called The Water Princess. And we're so excited to have you here for our Step for a Better World Read Across America event. So if there's not any questions, let's get started with hearing Vidi's book, Same, Same, But Different. Same, Same, But Different by Jenny Sue Kostecki Shaw. In art class, I painted a picture of my world. My teacher mailed it across the oceans. A boy drew back with colors of the sea. This is my world. Same, same, but different. P.S. Who are you? This is me. My name is Elliot, and I love to climb trees. My name is Kailash, and I love to climb trees too. Same, same, but different. This is me. P.S. Do you live in a tree? That is my tree house where I play. I live in a red brick building with my mom, dad, and baby sister. I live with my family too, all 23 of us. My mom, dad, sister, brother, grandmother, grandfather, aunties, uncles, and cousin. And our animals. I have pets too but not nearly as many as you. Same, same, but different. P.S. What does it look like where you live? A great river flows through my village. Peacocks dance under, under trees shaped like umbrellas. The sun is giant and especially hot here. In my city, the sun hides behind buildings as tall as the sky. Taxis, buses, and cars fill the streets. Here, there are few cars and still too much traffic. Same, same, but different. I ride a bus to school with my friends. So do I. Same, same, but different. This is our alphabet. And this is our alphabet. Same, same, but different. My favorite class is art, where I can be anything. My favorite class is yoga, where I can be anything. Same, same, but different. This is how my friends and I say hello. Clasp, secret file, snap, bump. This is how my friends and I say hello. Namaste. Same, same, but different. We're best friends, even though we live in two different worlds. Or do we? Different, different, but the same. That's it, thank you. Thank you so much for reading. Does anybody have any questions or comments or anything they want to share about what they liked about the story? Feel free to unmute. Let's go to the second book, which is Deepanchu. He's going to be reading Where Are You From? Where Are You From? by Jamie Kim and, Yumi and Saeed Mendes. Where are you from? They ask. Is your mom from here? Is your dad from there, they ask? I'm from here, from today, same as everyone else, I, I say. No, where are you really from, they insist. I ask Abuelo because he knows everything. And like me, he looks like he, does not, he doesn't belong. Where am I from? Abuelo thinks. 
His eyes squint like he look like he's looking inside his heart for an You come from the bomb buzz, the open free land, he says. You're from the gaucho, brave and strong, from the brown river that cleanses and feeds the land that gives us the grain for our bread, the milk for the, from the cows. You're from mountains so high they tickle Senor Cielo's belly, where the condor roost, roosts his family and the jaguar prowls the night. But you're also from the warm blue oceans the copper warriors tried to tame, and the elegant palm trees stretched their fingers to caress. You're from hurricanes and dark storms, and a tiny singing frog that calls the island's people home when the sun goes to sleep. From this land where our ancestors built a home for all, even when they were in chains because of the color of their skin. You're from the grandmothers who searched for their grandchildren, waiting, always waiting in a plaza, their white handkerchiefs wrapped the sorrow of their thoughts. You come from the sunshine that lights, that lights our path in this world and the rain that washes away our mistakes. But Abuelo, I ask, where am I really from? Abuelo laughs, you want a place? He points to his heart, you're from here, from my love and the love of all of those before us. From those who dreamed of you, because of a song sung under the Southern Cross or the words in a book written under the light of the North Star. You, you are from all of us. I am. Thank you so much for reading. That was a really interesting book. Next we have Dia, and she's going to be reading Adelita, a Mexican Cinderella story. A Mexican Cinderella story, Adelita, by Tommy de Paula. De mucho tiempo, a long time ago, in a village in Mexico, there lived a merchant man named Francisco and his beautiful young wife, Adela. One day, Adela said, Francisco, estamos esperando un bebé. We are going to have a baby. Adela, Francisco said, me hace muy feliz saberlo. I am so happy. Then he said, we must send for Esperanza. She will come and take care of you until the baby is born. And then she will help us with the baby. Esperanza had been with the Mercado family since she was a young girl. And she had looked after Francisco when he was a baby. Esperanza came right away. She took good care of Adela. But after the birth of the baby, Adela was ill. She, she grew weaker and shortly after, she held her little girl for the first and last time. Quietly, she died. Francisco was heartbroken. He named his baby daughter Adelita, little Adela after her mother. Francisco was so sad after his Adela and he missed her greatly, but gradually Adelita filled his heart with love. Time passed and Adelita grew into a beautiful young woman. La Casa Marcado se llenó de alegría. The Mercado house was full of happiness. Evening, Francisco called Adelita and Esperanza to his study. My dear Adelita, my good Esperanza, les tengo not noticias. I have some good news for you. I have met a charming woman and I have decided to marry again. Her name is Senora Micala de la Fortuna. She is a widow and has two daughters close to your age, Adelita. I know you will like the Dona Mikala and her daughters, Valentina and Luce. Adelita was happy for her father. Esperanza wasn't so sure, especially after she met Dona Mikala and her daughters. Your frias son, they're cold ones, Esperanza said. Life was happy, but different. Adelita had to share her father's attention, but they still managed to have importantes momentos juntos, special moments together. Adelita didn't mind that Dona Mikala favored her daughters, even though Esperanza complained. It's natural, it's natural, Adelita told her. Then suddenly, her father died from an illness, and everything changed. 
poor Adelita was an orphan. Dona Mikal had always been jealous of Adelita. Now she no longer had to hide it. She moved Adelita from her beautiful bedroom to a small room in the attic. No longer did Ad Adelita have new dresses. She had to wear hand-me-downs. Worst of all, Valentina and Dulce were mean and hateful to her. Adelita began spending all her time in the kitchen with Esperanza. She helped her with the meals. She listened to stories about her father as a boy and her mother as a young bride. Because she knew that Esperanza loved her, Adelita's heart stayed as warm as the fire in the hearth. One day, Dona Michala came to the kitchen and spoke to them. I am spending too much money in this household. From now on, you, Adelita, will work in the kitchen. You are here all the time anyway. And you, Esperanza, out. I want you to leave immediately. Oh, Senora de la Fortuna, please don't send me away, Esperanza pleaded. I have been with this family since I was a girl. I will work for no money, just for a place to lay my head and a bowl of beans and a tortilla. Oh, please, Mama, Adelita begged. Esperanza can share my room and my food. Out, shouted Senora Micala de la Fortuna to Esperanza. Then, in an icy voice, she spoke to Adelita. And don't you dare call me Mama again. I am Dona Micaela to you. She turned and left, nose in the air. Entre lagrimas y abrosos. Amid tears and hugs, poor Esperanza said goodbye to Adelita and left with her meager belongings. Adelita was in despair. The days ahead held nothing but loneliness and hard work. Adelita had to prepare all the meals, clean the rooms, and fetch and carry for Valentina and Dolce, who became more like Maldad de Maldad y Vinegre. Meanness and vinegar. Miss Tijas, my daughters, Dona Micaela said one morning as Adelita was serving breakfast. El Senor and La Senora Gordillo have sent us an inv invitation to una fiesta en su hacienda, a party at their ranch, to celebrate the homecoming of their son, Javier. Ooh, Mama, Valentina and Dulce twittered. And, Dona Micaela said with a smile, si ruma, si ruma, mora. rumor has it and he will be looking for a wife. The daughters nearly fainted. Secretly, each wanted to be the wife of Javier, and each would do anything to get him. Dona Mikala, Adelita asked as she poured the hot chocolate, may I go too? I, I knew Senor Javier when we were young. I would love to see him again. Are you serious? Dona Mikala asked. Look at you, so poorly dressed, such a dirty face. I would be too embarrassed to have you in our company. You will stay here, y punto, this is final. Adelita went back to the kitchen. The next days were busy. Adelita did not have a minute to herself, washing, pressing, sewing ribbons on, taking lace off, at the mercy of every little capricho whim of the sisters as, she, as each tried to outdo the other. So when Dona Micaela, Valentina, and Dulce left for the fiesta, Adelita went to the kitchen and sat by the fire. Suddenly, disappointment swept over her and she began to weep. She missed her father. She missed Esperanza. She missed being at the fiesta. Tap, tap, tap. She heard a soft knock at the door. Who is it? Adelita asked. So you, only me. It was Esperanza. Oh, Esperanza, I missed you so much. Adelita cried. Don't cry. Mi pequeñita, my little one. Esperanza said, I am here. I had uno sueno, a dream, that Dona Micaela would not let you go to the fiesta. So I have come to help. I have borrowed a cart to take you there. But I have nothing to wear, Adelita said. Come with me, Esperanza said. They went to the Cuarto de Filiches storeroom. Over there, behind those boxes, is your mother's trunk. The key is behind the crucifix. Adelita unlocked the trunk. trunk. Inside, she found an old-fashioned, beautiful white dress. Under the dress was a magnificent rebusa shawl, embroidered with birds and flowers. Oh, mi mamacita, my little mother, Adelita whispered. Adelita washed and dressed. Esperanza braided her hair and wound ribbons and flowers into it. Oh, Esperanza, Adelita said. Dona Mikal would will be furious when she sees me. Don't worry. She will never recognize you, Esperanza assured her. Now, vamos, let's hurry. The fiesta had already begun when Adelita arrived. She walked into the room. Everyone turned to look. The room fell silent. Who is this stunning young woman? The near Gordillo went up to Adelita. Who do we have here? He asked. I'm in disguise, Adelita said with a twinkle and a sweet smile. Just call me Cenicienta, Cinderella. Javier, everyone, Senor Gordillo said, come meet our very own Cenicienta. 
Davy looked, took one look and fell in love. He danced every dance with Adelita. He brought her refreshments. He never left her sad. Adelita's heart was full as well, and all the meanness she had suffered over the years began to melt. But at midnight, when Javier told, gave her a sweet kiss and declared his love, Adelita was frightened. How could she explain who she was? His family would never allow him to love a kitchen maid. So Adelita, so Adelita ran away and found Esperanza. They hurried home. I will never forget this night as long as I live, Esperanza, Adelita said. Gracias. Thank you. If you ever need me, Mieta, my little daughter, just call my name and somehow I will hear you. Esperanza told her. The next day, all Dona Micala and her two daughters could talk was about the mysterious Encienza, who had appeared and then disappeared from the fiesta, just like the fairy tale. They were jealous of her beauty and even more jealous because they knew that Javier had fallen in love with her. I'm glad no one knows who she is, Valentina said, or where she is, Dulce said. And no Zapatila de Cristel, glass slipper. Nona Mikala added, Javier had told everyone that he would not rest until he found his sentient. He is coming to town. Hoy miss me as so. This very day, Dona Mikala announced, he will stop at each house and look for her. This is a chance to show one more that ch what charms you have, my daughter. So prepare yourselves. Who knows? Maybe one of you will make, make him forget his sentienta. Adelita, he screamed, come help us quickly. I will be right there, Adelita answered. But before she went to Valentina and Dulce, she ran to her attic room and hung her mother's rebozo out the window. She helped the two sisters dress. Then she went back to her room and shyly peeked out the window. Soon, she saw Javier coming down the street on his horse. Suddenly, he saw the rebozo. He jumped down, ran to the door, and knocked. Senor Micala de la Fortuna opened, opened the door. Ah, Senor Javier, por favor, come in, please, she said. Senora, senora, where is she? I know my love is here, Javier said. Do you mean one of my daughters? Nona Micala said. Valentina, Dulce, come here. Senor Javier would like to see you. Sisters appeared in the doorway, feeling foolishly. Buen dia, good day, Senor Javier. I'm in unison. Do you remember us? Are you looking for us? Yes, ladies, I remember you, Javier answered. But it's another that I'm looking for. There's no one else here, Dona Mikaela said. Yes, there is, a voice said. Are you looking for me, Senor? There was Adelita, standing at the top of the stairs in her mother's dress and rebozo. Mas Cenicienta. Javier said. Who? What? What's going on? Dona Micala asked, while Valentina and Dulce looked at Adelita in astonishment. It's only Adelita, Dona Micala. Adelita said as she came down the stairs. Only Adelita. Who are you? Javier asked. I'm Adelita Marcado Martinez. We knew each other when we were children. Oh, Adelita, of course. I remember you as a little girl, Javier gasped. I'm so happy to have you found to have found you again, he smiled. I have come to ask my Cenicienta to marry me. Will you? I am an orphan, Senor Javier Adelita said. Perhaps you should ask Dona Micala if she would give, if she will give her permission. Will you, Senora? Javier asked. Why? I don't know. I don't know what. I mean, well, of course. We shall be honored, Senor Javier, Dona Micala said. Valentina and Jose glared at Adelita. Then it will be, Javier said, taking Adelita's hand in his. In her sweetness, Adelita invited Senor Micala de la Fortuna, Mercado, and her daughters, Valentina and Dulce, to the wedding. Of course, Esperanza was there, too. He was going to take care of Javier and Adelita just as she had done before. And just like Cenicienta and her principe, prince, we shall live muy felices for siempre, happily ever after, too, Javier said. And they did. Thank you for reading. Next, we have Pranav, and he's going to be reading When We Are Kind. When We Are Kind by Renit Graysmith. I am kind when I help my family. I am kind when I share with my friends. I am kind when I take my dog for, long, for an extra long walk. I am kind when I help my neighbor. I am kind when I bring food to my elders. I am kind when I only take from the earth what I need. I am kind when I take care of myself and get a good night's sleep. I feel joy when my family and our, I are kind. I feel happy when my friend is kind to me. I feel comforted when my cat is next to me. I feel loved when my elders are next kind to me. I feel grateful when the earth is kind to me. I feel respectful when I am kind to myself. When we are kind, we remember we are all related. That's it. 
Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pranav, for reading. Next, Surya is going to be reading Chanticleer and the Fox, which is a British story. Chanticleer and the Fox by Barbara Cooney. Once upon a time, a poor widow, getting on in years, lived in a small cottage beside a grove which stood in a little valley. This widow, about whom I should tell you my tale, had patiently led a very simple life since the day her husband died. By careful management, she was able to take care of herself and her two daughters. She had only three large sows, three cows, and also a sheep called Molly. Her bedroom was very sooty, as was her kitchen, in which she ate many a scanty meal. She was never sick from overeating. Her table was usually set with only white and black, milk and dark bread, of which there was no shortage. And sometimes there was broiled bacon and an egg or two, for she was, as it were, a kind of dairy woman. She had a yard, fenced her all around with sticks, in which she had a rooster named Chanticleer. Her crowing there was not his equal in all the land. His voice was merrier than the merry organ that plays in the church, and his crowing from his resting place was more trustworthy than a clock. His comb was redder than fine coral and turreted like a castle wall. His bill was black and shone like jet, and his legs and toes were azure. His nails were whiter than the lily, and his feathers were burnished gold, were like burnished gold. Now this fine rooster had seven hens, all colored exceedingly like him. The hen with the prettiest throat was called Fair Dermoiselle Partlet. She was polite, discreet, debonair, and compassionable, and had conducted herself so well since the time that she was seven days old that truly she held the heart of Chanticleer all tightly locked. It was a great joy to hear them sing in sweet harmony when the bright sun began to rise. For in those days, so I'm told, beasts and birds could talk and sing. And so it happened one day at dawn, as Chanticleer sat on his perch surrounded by the hens, that he began to groan in his throat like a man troubled by his dreams. When Partlet heard him moaning this way, she was frightened and said, Dear heart, what ails you that you groan in such a manner? And he answered saying, Madam, I dreamed just now that I was in much danger. I dreamed that I was roaming up and down within our yard when I saw a beast like a hound which tried to grab my body and would have killed me. His color was between yellow and red and his tail and both ears were tipped with black different from the rest of his fur. His snout was small and his two eyes glowed. I almost died of fear at the sight of him. Doubtless, that's what caused my groaning. Go on, she said, shame on you, you know. I cannot love a coward by my faith. Have you a man's, haven't you a man's heart and haven't you a beard? Be merry, husband, do not fear dreams. Thank you, Madam Partlet, he said, for your learned advice. I do say that when I see the beauty of your face, all scarlet red about the eyes, my fears die away. And with these words, he flew down from the rafter, all along, along with, all the hem, with all the hens, for it was day. With a clucking, he called them all to some grain, which he found lying about the yard. He was as regal as a prince in his palace and was no longer afraid. He looked like a lion as he roamed up and down on his toes. He barely set foot to the earth. Chanticleer, walking in all his pride, with his seven wives beside him, cast up his eyes at the bright sun. He crowed with a happy voice. Listen how happy the birds sing and how the fresh flowers grow. My heart is full of gaiety and joy. But suddenly a sorrowful event overtook him. A fox, tipped with black and full of sly wickedness, had lived in the grove three years. That same night, he burst through the hedges into the yard where fair Chanticleer and his wives were in the habit of going. And this fox lay quietly in a bed of herbs until almost noon now that day. Parlet, with all her sisters nearby, lay merrily bathing in this, bathing in the sand, with her back to the sun, and the lordly Chanticleer sang more joyfully than the mermaid in the sea. Now it happened that as he cast his eye upon a butterfly among the herbs, Chanticleer became aware of the fox lying low. He had no desire to crow then, but at once cried, cock, cock, and started up like a man frightened in his heart. As, and he would have fled at once if the fox had not said, my dear sir, alas, where are you going? Are you afraid of me, your father's friend? The reason I came was only to listen to you sing, for truly you have as merry a voice as any angel in heaven. My Lord, your father, God bless his soul, and also your court courteous mother did me the great honor of visiting my house. Except for you, I have never heard anyone who could sing as your father did in the morning. In order to make his voice stronger, he would close both his eyes and he would stand on his tiptoes and stretch forth his long slender neck. Now sing, sir, for holy charity. Let's see whether you can sing as well as your father. Chanticleer began to beat his wings. He stood high on his toes and stretched his neck, closed his eyes and crowed loudly. At once, the fox jumped up, grabbed Chanticleer by the throat and carried him toward the woods. 
Alas, that Chanticleer flew down from the rafters. Alas, that his wife took no heed of his dreams, and all this trouble came on a Friday. Such a cry was never made, as was made by all the hens in the yard when they saw Chanticleer captured. The poor widow and her two daughters heard the woeful cries of the hens and at once ran out of the door. They saw the fox going toward the grove, carrying away the rooster. Help, help, woe is me. Look, a fox, they screamed and ran after him. The cows, the sheep, and even the hogs, so frightened were they by the shouting, ran after him, too. They ran so hard they thought their hearts would burst. The neighbor's ducks quacked as if they were to be killed, and their geese from fear flew over the trees. The noise was so terrible that the bees swarmed from their hive. It seemed that heaven would fall. Now, good people, I beg you all to listen. This rooster in the fox's mouth sp spoke to the fox in spite of his fear, saying, Sir, if I were you, so help me God, I would say, turn back, you proud peasants. I shall have reached the edge of the wood now. The rooster shall say here, in spite of you, I will eat him in faith and not be long about it. In faith, the fox answered, it shall be done. As soon as he spoke the words, the rooster nimbly broke away from his mouth and flew at once high into a tree. When the fox saw that the rooster was gone, he said, alas, O oh Chanticleer, alas, I have done you a bad turn. I frightened you when I grabbed you and took you out of the yard. But sir, I did it without evil intention. Come down and I shall tell you what I meant. Nay then, said Chanticleer, never again shall you with your flattery get me to sing with my eyes closed. For he who closes his eyes when he should watch, God let him never prosper. No, said the fox, but God bring misfortune to him who is so careless about his self-control as to prattle when he should hold his peace. He said the widow, as the fox slunk into the grove, that is the result of trusting in flattery. And she marked with her flock back to the yard in the little valley. The end. Thank you for reading. That was a great story. Next, we have Ananya, and she was going to be reading about the Chinese zodiac. That I'm going to read today is sort of like a small play. Jasmine, I'm done sweeping, Grandma. Is there anything else I can do to help you? No. If you've already swept out all of the bad luck, we are ready for our guests. Grandma, these vegetable dumplings look great. May I have one? No, no. The tradition is to eat the jiaozi at midnight. Midnight? Grandma, why don't we celebrate the Chinese New Year on January 1st? Grandma, because the traditional Chinese, because on the traditional Chinese calendar, the year begins when the first new moon appears in the sky. That's usually in late January or early February. What's the new moon? It's when the moon is between the sun and the earth. Matthew, when is everyone going to get here anyway? I'm ready to party. Grandma, soon, my impatient little snakes. Soon. Matthew, why am I a snake? Grandma, because that is your Chinese zodiac animal. Matthew, right, but I mean why? Grandma says, because of the year you were born. There are 12 animals in the Chinese zodiac. Each represents a different year. For example, you were born in 2001, the year of the snake. So you are a snake. Jasmine was born in 1999, the year of the rabbit. So she is a rabbit. But I thought that 2011 is the year of the rabbit. Grandma says, it is, the cycle repeats. It's been repeating and repeating for thousands of years. Jasmine asks, who created the Chinese zodiac? No one knows for sure, but I can tell you a wonderful story about it. The Jade Palace, Ancient China. Jade, the Jade Emperor. Noble wife, I've been thinking that humans need a better way to keep track of their time. Jade Empress. I agree, noble husband. They are always getting confused. Exactly. What they need are names for the 12 years in the 12 year cycle. Perhaps I should name the years after my favorite dumplings? Empress, the year of the vegetable dumpling? Emperor, hmm, now that I hear you say it, I'm not so sure. Let's ask what my chief advisor, Panda, what he thinks. Oh, Panda, Panda, bowing. Oh, great Emperor, I'm unworthy to be in your presence. Emperor, trusted Panda, I'm going to name them, name the years. What should I name them? Perhaps, Heavenly Grandfather, you can name them after some of China's magnificent animals? Emperor, that is an excellent suggestion. Let's have a race. 
I will name the years after the first 12 animals to finish. As you wish, sir. I will instruct the wind to send an invitation to one of every kind of animal in the kingdom. Announcer 1. Chang. I've never seen so much animals in one place. Announcer 2. It's a zoo out there, Chen. Let's check in with the animals as they warm up. Tiger. How are you doing? Nervous? Tiger. Nothing scares me, man. Bring it on. Announcer 2. Rabbit. How about you? Thank you for asking, sir. I'm having a great time. It's fun to be surrounded by so many other animals. Announcer 1. Cat. Any worries about the swimming portion of the race? Yes, yes, I am very nervous. I'm a terrible swimmer. Horse. Never mind, cat. You have some very good qualities, like your beautiful fur. Cat. Thank you, horse, but my fur doesn't help me run fast like you. Snake. To himself. So true. I think I'll slip into horse's hoof and hitch a ride. Ox. Cat, would you like a ride? I would be happy to carry you. Cat, thank you, Ox. You're so dependable. And answer two, I'll tell you, Chan, there's a lot of amazing animals here. But in my book, there is one to watch is the rat. You never know what plans that little guy is cooking up, right, rat? That's right, buddy, to Ox. Oh, Ox, you who, can I hitch a ride too? Ox, sure, my back is broad enough for two. Cat, great, hop on, rat. And answer one, there is the sound of the gong, and they're off. Answer two, look at Tiger and Dog go. They've got this race locked up. Hold on, what does Rat have in his hand? It's a stick. He's tossing it away from the racers. And there goes Dog, running after it. Dog, stick, stick. And answer one, too bad. That's really going to set Dog back. He's just so easily distracted. The contestants have now reached the swift moving river. Monkey, sheep, I suggest that we work together to build a raft. That's not a bad idea. Sounds like fun, let's do it. Announcer one, Ox is looking good out there in the river with Rat and Cat on his back. Announcer two, it looks like Rat is pointing at something in the water. Cat, what, do you see that delicious fish? Where, there, announcer one, Cat has jumped into the river. Oh boy, looks like the cat is out of the race. The finish line. Happy New Year, noble husband. Thank you, noble wife. This is really quite exciting. Panda, is everything ready for the party? Yes, a wise and mighty one. The lanterns are lit and the feast is prepared. The crowd awaits our 12 worthy winners. And here they come. Ox is about to take first place. But wait, what just jumped off his back? A rat, eek, a smart move by a clever competitor. Rat is the winner. I'm number one, this is the rat. I hereby declare that the rat will represent the first year of my zodiac calendar. Anyone born in this year will be covered like a rat. Ox has taken second place. We can't all be first. Second is fine by me, says the ox. The second year will be the year of the ox. Children born in that year will be easygoing and dependable. Tigers next, followed by rabbit and dragon. And here comes horse. No, wait. Snake just appeared out of nowhere. Yes, I'm sixth and horse is seventh. And here comes sheep, monkey, rooster, and dog, and pig. Hey, everyone. I would have been here sooner, but Rat told me not told me about a great dumpling house not far from the river. I brought some dumplings to share. Vegetable dumplings? My favorite. Empress. And they're shaped like golden nuggets. That means we'll all be rich. Congratulations to the winners and good health and happiness to all. Scene six. Grandma's kitchen present day. Wait, Rat won? Isn't there a Chinese proverb that says cheaters never prosper? Grandma, well, yes, Jasmine, and Cat totally lost. She didn't get a year named after her. Grandma, no, she did not. And that's why to this day, cats hate rats and water. Jasmine, great story, Grandma. Grandma, we finished just in time. I hear fireworks. Jasmine, the doorbell's ringing, I'll get it. Matthew, I hope our 
relatives bring us red envelopes filled with money like they did last year. Let the new year celebration begin. Gung hei fa choi. Yes, you may be happy and prosperous in the new year too, my darling grandchildren. Thank you so much for reading. That was really fun to hear how the zodiac was decided. So let's see like each other's zodiacs. I'm gonna share my screen and show you a chart that can help you figure out based on what year you're born, what Chinese zodiac are you? Well, I was born in 2003, so I'm going to be year of the goat. So if you wanna unmute, you can share what year you were born in and what animal you are. I was born in 2007 and I'm a pig. I'm a monkey. I'm a monkey as well. Um, I'm a goat. A dragon, I like that. Yeah, it looks like Ishan and Lokia and Parth are all rabbits. Next, we have Namish, and he's going to be reading Caribbean Dream. The Caribbean Dream by Rachel Isadora. Where morning meets light, we rise. Where our friends meet friends, we smile. Where sound meets color, we hide. Where waves meet sand, we swim. Where sun meets water, we fish. Where sea meets sky, we sail. Where wind meets hill, we run. Where rain meets earth, we splash. Where music meets hearts, we sing. Where song meets soul, we dance. Where years meet story, we see. Where moonlight meets path, we walk. Where darkness meets light, we dream, we dream. The end. Thank you for reading. Next, I'm going to be reading The Water Princess, which is an African story. Water Princess, written by Susan Verde. I am Princess Gigi. My kingdom, the African sky, so wide and so close. I can almost touch the sharp edges of the stars. I can tame the wild dogs with my song. I can make the tall grass sway when I dance. I can make the wind play hide and seek, but I cannot make the water come closer. I can make, cannot make the water run clearer, no matter what I command. It is early morning, still dark. My mother wakes me. Gigi, my princess, it is time to get up. We must collect the water. Water, come. Do not make me walk, wait before even the sun is out of bed, I demand. Come, please, I, do, I say. But the water won't listen and I know we will have to walk so far to the well. I am too sleepy to put on my crown. I think of the pot that will rest on my braids instead. Thirst comes quick, dry lips, dry throat. I squeeze my eyes shut, I see it, clear. I dip my toes in it, cool. I scoop it up and bring it to my lips. Slowly, I open my eyes, nothing. I kick the dust. I grab my empty pot and place it upon my head. My mother does the same and our journey begins, full of song. My maman adds her melody. Our steps are light, we twirl and laugh together. The miles give us room to dance. Halfway there, we stop for a moment at the giant carroty tree, 
long enough to grab a handful of sweet shea nuts for energy. We can keep the dance going just a little longer. Maman, are we there yet? Finally, I hear the water running from the well, the giggles of my friends, the chatter of women. Some have traveled farther than I, only to return home when the sun has gone to bed. Maman holds our place while I play with my friends. The dance continues. The water is flowing. Pots filling with the dusty, earth-colored liquid. Gigi, come! Maintenance. My turn now. The dance home has slowed to careful steps. My thirst so heavy, like the full pot I carry. My, our song is softer now. Our shoulders ache, our feet cramp. But I see home at last. On boils enough water for drinking. We wait. We wash our clothes, we, re we prepare food for cooking. My father comes quickly from the fields to share the drink in the meal. He scoops me up. My princess, you've returned with the water. Drink, Maman says. Finally, every sip fills me with energy. I want to make it last, but I can't. I gulp it down. Clothes and body clean, I sing to the dogs. I dance with the tall grass. I hide from the wind. Maman brings one last cup she has saved for me. Drink, my princess. Sleep, my princess. Tomorrow we journey again. Maman, I say as I close my eyes. Why is the water so far? Why is the water not clean? Where is our water? Sleep, she says. Dream, she says. Someday you will find a way, my princess. Someday. I am Princess Gigi. My kingdom, the African sky, the dusty earth. And someday, the flowing, cool, crystal clear water. Someday, at the end. Next, we have Ananya, and she's going to be reading Rumpelstiltskin, a German story. Once there was a poor miller who had a beautiful daughter. On his way to town one day, the miller encountered the king. Wanting to impress him, the miller said, I have a daughter who knows the art of spinning straw into gold. Now the king had a passion for gold, and such an art intrigued him, so he ordered the miller to send his daughter to the castle straight away. When the girl was brought before him, the king led her to a room that was filled with straw. He gave her spools and spinning wheel and said, you may spin all night, but if you have not spun the straw into gold by morning, you will have to die. With that, he locked the door and the girl was left inside alone. There sat the poor miller's daughter without the slightest idea how anyone could spin straw into gold. For the life of her she did not know what to do she grew more and more frightened and then she began to weep suddenly the door sprang open and a tiny man stepped in good evening mistress miller he said why are you sobbing oh the girl cried i must spin this straw into gold and i don't know how what will you give me if i spin it for you the little man asked my necklace answered the girl the little man took her necklace and sat down at the spinning wheel he pulled three times whir 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 and the spool was round full of gold thread he he fitted another spool spool on and whir 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 three pulls and thus one two was full and so it went until morning when all the straw was spun and all the spools were full of gold when the king came at sunrise, he was amazed and delighted, but all that gold only made him greedier. So he led the miller's daughter to a larger room filled with straw, and he ordered her to spin this straw too before dawn if she valued her life. The girl did not know what to do. She began to weep. Once more, the door opened and the little man stepped in. What will you give me if I spin this straw into gold for you? He asked. The ring on my finger, answered the girl, and the little man took her ring. Then he set the spinning wheel whirring, and before the night was over, he had spun all the straw into gleaming gold. Shortly after sunrise, the king returned. Piles of golden spools glowed in the morning light. The king rejoiced at the sight of so much gold, but still he was not satisfied. He led the miller's daughter to a third, even bigger room that was piled high with straw. Tonight you must spin this straw too, ordered the king, and if you succeed, you shall become my wife. Because he thought I could not find a richer wife in all the world. When the king had left, the little man appeared for the third time. What will you give me if I spin for you yet once more, he asked. I have nothing else, the girl replied. Then promise that when you become queen, your first child will belong to me. The miller's daughter gasped. How could she promise such a thing? Then she thought, but who knows whether that will ever happen. And as she could think of no other way to save herself, she promised. And the little man once again spun all the straw into gold. When the king came in the morning and found everything as he had wished, he married the miller's beautiful daughter and she became a queen.
A year passed and the queen brought a handsome baby boy into the world. She gave scarcely a thought to the little man, but one day he appeared suddenly in her room. Now give me what you promised me, he demanded. The queen pleaded with the little man. He could take all the royal treasure if you would only let her keep her child, but her pleading was in vain. Then she began to weep so piteously that at last the little man was moved. I will give you three days, he said. If by the end of that time you know my name, you may keep the child. Long into the night, the queen sat, and through the next day, thinking over all the names she had ever heard. That evening, the little man returned. Beginning with Caspar, Melochior, and Balthazar, the queen recited every name she knew, one after another. But to each one, the little man replied, that is not my name. The second day, the queen had inquiries made in town, searching for new names, and when the little man came that evening, she posed the strangest and most unusual ones to him. She tried BC ribs and Lego ram and string bones, but he would only reply, that is not my name. Now the queen grew truly frightened, and she sent her most faithful servant into the woods to look for the little man. The servant searched through thickets and over clearings deep into the forest. At last, near the top of a high hill, she spied him. He was riding on a cooking spoon around a great fire and crying out, I brew my beer, I bake my loaves, and soon the queen's own son I'll cl claim. Oh, lucky me, for no one knows that Rumpelstiltskin is my name. The servant made her way back as fast as she could manage and at midday reached the castle. You can imagine how glad the queen was when she heard the name. Late that evening, the little man arrived. Now, Mrs. Queen, he said, do you know my name or do I take the child? So the queen asked him, is your name Will? No. Is your name Phil? No. In that case, is your name Rumpelstiltskin? The devil told you that. The devil told you that, shrieked Rumpelstiltskin. And in a furry, he jumped on his cooking spoon and flew out the window. And he was never heard from again. Thank you, Ananya, for reading. So next we have Aria, and she's going to be reading a story about Native American culture. We are water protectors. Water is the first medicine, Nokomis told me. We come from water. It nourished us inside our mother's body, as it nourishes us here on Mother Earth. Water is sacred, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. The river's rhythm runs through my veins, runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that will destroy the land. Spoil the water, poison plants and animals, wreck everything in its path. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it would come for many, many years. Now the black snake is here. Its venom burns the land, courses through the water, making it unfit to drink. Take courage. I must keep the black snake away from my village's water. I must rally my people together. To stand for the water, to stand for the land, to stand as one against the black snake. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. It will not be easy. We fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. The winged ones, the crawling ones. The four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes. The earth, we are all related. Tears like waterfalls stream down tracks down my face, tracks down my people's face. Water has its own spirit, Nokomis told me. Water is alive. Water remembers our ancestors who came before us, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We are stewards of the earth. Our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors. We stand. The black snake is in for the fight of its life. Thank you for reading, Aria. So our last book for today is going to be read by Anika, which is on multiple cultures called All Are Welcome. All Are Welcome by Alexandra Penfold and Susan Kaufman. Pencils sharpened in their case. Bells are ringing. Let's make haste. School's beginning. Dreams to chase. All are welcome here. No matter how, how you start your day, what you wear when you play, or if you come from far away, all are welcome here. Classroom, safe and sound, fears are lost and hope is found. Raise your hand, we'll go around, all are welcome here. Gather now, let's all take part. We'll make music, we'll make art. We'll share stories from the heart, all are welcome here. Time for lunch, what a spread, a dozen different kinds of bread. 
pass it around till everyone's fed. All are welcome here. We will learn from each other. Special talents we'll uncover. There's a big world to discover. All are welcome here. So much to learn, so much to do. And when the busy day is through, can't wait to come back, start anew. All are welcome here. Head for home to get some rest and greet tomorrow ready and fresh. Our time together is the best. All are welcome here. You have a place here. You have a space here. You are welcome here. The end. Thank you for reading everyone. So as our last activity for today, we're going to be playing a game called quizzes, which is similar to Kahoot. So you're going to be answering one question about each of the books we've read. So join on joinmyquiz.com and enter the join code 947941. Let's start.
Hey, thank you for playing, everyone. Did any of you have a favorite book or culture that you read something or you enjoyed hearing about and that you want to share? Lokia. Yeah, water protectors. Yeah. I thank you, everybody, for reading and for participating in the event today. If you have older siblings who are interested in their like ages 14 or older, we would be happy to have them join STEP for a better world and get volunteer hours. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we hope you enjoyed and hope to see you guys again sometime in the future.